Hey there, and welcome back to XCOM 2. My name is Pete, and today we complete another episode of our Legend Iron Man walkthrough of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. Last time we left off after another face-off with the Chosen Hunter, although this time we finally brought some magnetic weapons with us, and we also saw the first of our new Templar recruit in action. Now, we finished that episode with questions regarding what to research and what to build next, and I think, thanks to your comments on the video, we have found ourselves some answers. I am ready to begin on your order, Commander. So, research is up first, and here the clear choice is to go with Resistance Radio. Not only is it inspired and will therefore be completed in just 11 days, but completing this will also bring down the intel costs for making contact with regions that are a bit further away from our HQ in West Africa. And one of those expensive, faraway regions is currently housing our next plot mission, so I would say this is research time well spent. I foresee a number of valuable applications stemming from this technology. I'll have a report assembled as soon as the research is complete. So, with our researchers busy, let us now take care of that building spot we cleared last episode. And here we are going in a very similar direction, skipping the proving ground, which is actually what the game currently recommends us to build, but instead we are going for resistance comms to increase our region capacity. At the moment, no matter how much more intel we acquire, we can't actually make contact with any more regions. This new facility, meanwhile, will give us a bit more room to operate. Commander, we've pushed our current power systems to the limit. We don't have any capacity to spare, which means we can't expand our facilities further. And because we want to have it built as quickly as possible, let us move over one of the engineers from our dig side. So Dr. Isaac Schmidt will now support the construction of the resistance comms, while Baron von H will continue to clear out alien debris. And that's it. With that, I think we can get started. We are currently in the process of scanning for intel, and I would say there is no reason not to continue to do that. Okay, so we have just suffered through another chosen sabotage and this one is a bit annoying because it delays the completion of our next covert operation by one week. That is unfortunate because I specifically started this one to be finished before the end of the month as we are currently hunting another chosen and finishing that covert action would give us another resistance order slot. So looks like we won't get that just yet and have to wait for the next supply drop. Not a huge problem in the grand scheme of things, keep in mind that chosen sabotages can be much much worse, but still this is definitely annoying. The chosen aren't afraid to resort to sabotage tactics if it means slowing down our efforts. We need to work to prevent these attacks before they catch up with us. And you can also see it here in the event queue, the covert action now up to 15 days, while the next supply drop takes place in 10. Okay, and with that we have trained ourselves into the Grenadier in Ingrid Angel Ericsson, and that means we actually also only have one more rookie left to train in the Guerrilla Tactics School. His name is Bryn Graham, nicknamed Whiskey, and I actually wasn't quite sure which class to give him, since at the moment we do in fact have four soldiers in all of the four base classes. However, in his short biography, which you can see on screen right now, the role of being a mechanic is mentioned, so I thought why not make Bryn a specialist, that seems to be the closest there is to that. So with his training underway, we can continue to scan and quickly grab our intel report. Strategic resource located. 95 intel richer, we now technically have enough intel to make contact with one of the closer regions, like East Africa here. However, as I've mentioned earlier, the game also has a plot mission waiting for us in West Asia, and for that we sadly don't have enough just yet. Commander, as of right now we don't have enough intel to get a solid bearing on the local resistance forces in that area. Now bringing down the intel costs of these faraway regions, that is exactly what the radio relay will be good for, but of course we also still need to obtain additional region capacity. By the way, just because you can see it in the background here, we won't stop by the black market until we have at least 50 intel to spare. There usually isn't anything useful available over there for cheap, and even though traveling doesn't take long, we might as well spend the time elsewhere, for example in West Africa, to increase the region's monthly income. Avenger plotting new course. Okay, here we go, a dreaded dark event has gone live, this one giving advent officers and priests free reaction fire if we miss them with our shots, and this definitely has the potential to be annoying at the very least, so we absolutely want to keep it in mind as long as it's active. 
In the meantime though, let's keep scanning and see if we can't acquire a bit more money for the next supply drop. And there we are, lovely. With that, West Africa now earns us 23 supplies more per month, which doesn't sound like a lot right now, but will definitely pay for itself the longer we have it running. Avenger plotting new course. And since we don't have anything else useful to investigate at the moment, let's fly back to the skirmish HQ. That should help us get those resistance comms built a bit faster. Okay, it looks like there is no time for scanning after all, as we have today's mission pop up. So let's take a closer look at the details of this supply raid. Alright, so nothing out of the ordinary here until we get to the SIDRAP, which casually mentions that we are limited to only three soldiers for this one. So this could get interesting, especially since as far as I'm aware enemy numbers will not be reduced to accommodate for this. In other words, our three soldiers will deal with at least three parts of hostiles. Now luckily, the Raid the Train objective does not come with a mission timer and we should also start things off in concealment. Still, if you've thought that things have gone a bit too smooth thus far, well, this mission right here is surely going to be a new type of challenge. Setting course for Sector 7, Western Europe. Commander, due to conditions in the field, we'll only be able to send limited personnel on this deployment. And here we are, this is going to be our squad for this one, built around the simple objective of dealing as much damage as possible. Ranger Starfall Antec not only has the free axe throw action, but also, and I missed this last time, a free upgrade slot, as magnetic weapons come with two of those instead of only one. So since he's usually close enough to not need an aim bonus, and since ammo capacity is also solid, let's slap a laser sight on there for extra crit chance. After all, Starfall is pretty good at getting those. Dragonova then is with us mainly to scout and blow things up, because those train maps usually have a few objects that can be blown up with remote start. Still, that might not be enough, so for the first time in this playthrough we're actually going to spend some ability points. Dragonova herself still has 6 and we also have a shared pool of 36, and of those 42 in total we will now grab 11 to unlock shrapnel, giving a damage and explosion radius increase to her claymore. Finally then we have Mox, mainly because he can shoot twice per turn and is pretty mobile, but he is not yet upgraded to magnetic weapons, so let's quickly do that. For 45 supplies and 10 alloys we can first grab the Ionic Ripjack, which we thankfully have unlocked already after the Stun Lancer autopsy. A bit pricier then is the Bullpup upgrade, but this improves his base damage output from 3 to 5 points, and again, since he can shoot twice per turn, this effect is potentially doubled. With a scope and an expanded magazine, the bullpup becomes even more powerful, and especially the magazine can be important, as the regular clip size of only 3 does not really accommodate a fire twice per turn playstyle. That is about all we can do to prep for this one though, so let's see how this goes. This is in all likelihood still going to be one hell of a difficult mission. Ranger deployed. We're in the pipe. Five by five. We've got a lead on a disabled advent train that was hit by resistance operatives working in this area. There's still the potential to recover valuable technology here, so we're moving to capture whatever we can. We'll need to secure the area and remove any hostile forces still defending the train if we're going to make this work. Menace 1-5. Coordinates of the advent train are locked in. Move to secure. Eliminate all hostiles. If we're going to keep this one quiet, Commander, we'll have to limit the squad size to three of our best units. Let's hope they can get the job done without additional support. Alright then, here we go with three people at our disposal, but at least we start things off in concealment. There are also some small high ground patches available to us, and the train is barely visible in the shadows as well, and that direction is likely where our enemies will be waiting for us. So let's start scouting ahead, after all we brought a Reaper with us. I go where you tell me. The target is marked. These mutons seem a little more agile than the ones we fought in the past. It looks like they're still serving as the alien's front line, though. Okay, and we have found our first enemies, including a new type, or rather, an updated version of the Muton that we already know from the first game. As you can see, they are still very durable foes, they also once again carry grenades with them, and they now also have a melee attack. 
Thanks to our concealment though, we remain undetected for now. So let's get Mox and Dragonova onto the high ground, while Ranger Starfall stays in the back. Alright, so this move right here may have just been perfect, as our enemies have stopped right next to an object that we can blow up with Dragonova's remote start. Now, unfortunately, blowing this up would also destroy one of the supply crates we are supposed to protect, and the Muton is also just outside of the blast radius. However, we can use Remote Start as often as we want, it just has a one-turn cooldown, and most importantly, since it is used by our Reaper, it will not reveal our squad. And such an easy free kill is just too good to pass up, even if it's just against a single mech, so let's get to it here and start things off with a bang. Enjoy the show. Menace 1-5, watch those supply crates. If you destroy them, there won't be anything left for us to recover once the area is secure. So yeah, we destroyed some loot, but the mech as well. Regarding our position, the Muton is none the wiser. And I would actually like to keep it that way and maintain concealment for as long as possible. At least until we've learned a bit more about what other enemies we're dealing with. So the Muton flees and immediately we have another group of enemies show up. You will never hide from me. This time we have another Muton, a Stun Lancer and a regular trooper. Their clumsy patrol is moving. And had we broken concealment already, this could now be a potentially dangerous fight. However, since we are still hidden, we can start moving up just a little bit with Dragonova, bring Starfall up onto the high ground and then end our turn on Overwatch. Moving as ordered. That's affirmative. Keep now, the single muton here has now spotted his compatriots and will start following that group. However, since it is up first, it will always move to the group's old position, which then moves elsewhere. So we likely won't be able to catch them all in one spot, but let's wait and see what happens. And again, you can see it here, the muton following its allies, who then promptly run away. So let's keep following them. Again, we have nothing to fear here as long as we are concealed and keep at least a bit of distance. My life is in your hands. And yes, this might not be as exciting to watch, but we really need to wait for the perfect moment to strike here. After all, there is no guarantee that we'll be able to use Remote Start again so effectively, or even at all. So it might come down to how much we can get out of that single Claymore that Dragonova has. And since this is one of those rare missions without a timer, let's use that to our advantage. After a bit more back and forth then, we find ourselves maybe a bit too close for comfort, so let's retreat a few steps. Volk says I am to obey. Keep in mind that in order to place and blow up a Claymore, we need to spend a full turn and can't move. And even in shadow mode, Dragonova can still be detected if enemies get too close or flank her. So once again, this needs to be timed just right, otherwise we might lose one of our most valuable assets. Not to mention that there is likely a third group of enemies also still running around, so there is no need to be hasty here. I see everything. I will reposition. You can never escape my sight. An alien patrol. Okay, and speaking of that third group, I think we've just found them. I go where I'm needed. This time we are looking at a mech a stun lancer and a trooper, and I can't help but notice that they are standing close to some explosives, and if they happen to move just a tiny bit closer, we might be able to pull off another remote start ambush. For now though, it looks like they are not moving at all, but let's stay patient. Who knows, maybe an explosion will get their attention, and that one will actually happen right now, as that first trio of enemies has finally moved into a spot I feel comfortable with. So Claymore out and then we'll explode it immediately, that should take care of all but the Muton. A delicate placement. Resupply. All right, so an injured Muton without armor is on the run and again we have not yet been revealed. That is the magic of the Reaper in XCOM 2, although admittedly this does not work every time and heavily depends on mission type and map. 
Now the two mutons seem to stick together, performing some weird dance around each other. The other trio meanwhile remains put, so let's move a little bit closer. Sometimes the game is a bit weird in these situations and only starts patrolling enemies once we have sight of the entire group. I am trusting you. The target is marked. And not only do we get that, but we also spot a turret on top of the train here. However, even that can't peek through our concealment. I won't let them pass. That's a surprise. The muton mating dance then continues, and it looks like we won't get any movement out of the other enemies. So at this point, I think it's time that we start moving up Mox and Starfall. A great distance. Keep in mind that we also have the frost bomb on Mox, and two mutons standing right next to each other might be the perfect scenario to use that. Reapers are always vigilant. For now though, let's grab some high ground. After all, we might end up having to fire a few shots after all. Alright, now finally we have some movement. It might have been the dashing that caused our enemies to hear us. Either way, I think they will now start patrolling. And there are actually three remote star targets right around their area. So let's spend one or two more turns on Overwatch here and see if they don't end up standing right next to one. And indeed, it just takes one turn until the entire trio ends up standing right next to the truck here. And that means we can in fact use Remote Start again, this time to wipe out an entire alien group. Our world is dangerous. Now, unfortunately, this also destroyed some loot, but considering the circumstances of this mission, I think we can live with that. Most importantly, though, we are still not revealed, and it is now down to only us and the mutons, at least that is what I believe. If there was a fourth group of enemies on the map, I think they would have shown themselves by now. So let's not delay this any further and open fire with Mox here. His first shot is a guaranteed kill against the injured muton. This also earns him the promotion and now we quickly need to mention the fact that mutons have a melee attack, which they can use as a reaction to our melee attacks. This is never mentioned the first time you meet them, but could deal up to 8 points of damage against our ranger here. So in general, it's a good idea not to target mutons with melee attacks, which is why we are first going for the axe throw and then take aim with the shotgun. I definitely got that one. Status confirmed. All hostiles are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. And there we go. Mission complete. There is no need to take out the turret. And it would have been difficult to do so anyway, because we would have needed to keep one of the other enemies alive. Otherwise, as you can see here, killing them all automatically ends the mission. And so we somehow once again beat the odds and come away with a flawless mission despite being limited to only three soldiers. Admittedly though, we did get a bit lucky with those two remote starts. But that's what the Reaper is here for, and that's why I brought her in the first place. I would like to assure the citizens of Advent that our peacekeepers will stop at nothing to prevent further attacks by criminal elements such as the one that occurred today. The elders have total faith in our ability to overcome any and all threats to our peace. To end the Elder's false vision. That is the purpose of all skirmishers. Until it is done, there can be no other path for us. After the mission then, we have a promotion waiting for Mox, but not for Dragonova. And with Mox, this actually has only been his third mission with us. For his sergeant skill, we now once again have three choices, starting with Wrath, which is basically a reverse justice. With Justice, Mox pulls enemies towards him to deliver a ripjack melee strike, while with Wrath, he pulls himself towards them. Admittedly, this does make Wrath a bit more risky, but despite being very similar, the two abilities do not share a cooldown, which means Wrath can be used when Justice is not available. 
Zero in meanwhile sounds good in theory, giving Mox a plus 10 crit chance for subsequent shots against the same target. However, the wording on subsequent is taken very literally here, as the effect is interrupted even by mundane stuff such as reloading, so it's not really something you can reliably stack for a plus 40 or plus 50 crit chance. His XCOM bonus skill tactical rigging is then actually pretty useful again, having an extra utility slot is basically never a bad idea, and I was admittedly very tempted to take this, however ultimately I think that Wrath is more of a class defining ability for him, especially in conjunction with lightning reflexes which we picked at the corporal level, so even if we trigger reaction fire while pulling Mox towards enemies, he is at least somewhat protected. Now with the, I think, very much acceptable destruction of one supply crate, we still recovered a good amount of stuff here, including two Illyrium cores and a bunch of Illyrium crystals, alloys and supplies. We also recovered our first Muton corpses, which has automatically unlocked the Muton autopsy. However, if we manage to collect seven more for a total of nine, then we can complete the autopsy instantly, and I'm afraid we'll get to that number sooner rather than later. For today though, with another difficult mission in the back, I think we have reached a good point to make the cut. Yes, we are keeping things a bit shorter today as I'm getting ready for the holidays, but of course our adventure will continue right where we left off here today very soon. Until then, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and if you did, then I would be very happy if you could leave a thumbs up, and if you like what I'm doing and want to support me and my channel further, then you can go ahead and subscribe to stay up to date, grab some merch over on shop.petecomplete.com, or check out and maybe even pledge to the Pete Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.